welcome back to my channel. So today I do have a little bit of a mini true vintage haul for you. I'm so excited. So I went to a true vintage and antiques fair today and I've also done a little bit of true vintage shopping recently and I wanted to show you what I got as well as going through some of the history of a couple of the items. So of course you will recognise this beautiful true vintage dress which I made a full video about, I will link that in a card up above. <laughs> um, but I did also get today at the vintage market this beautiful brooch. This is a true vintage 1950s I believe piece. I didn't get the exact era from the seller but um, I know it was vintage and she did have a lot of 1950s pieces so I'm kind of just assuming although it's not very typical of that era so I think it might be maybe 40s or possibly even 30s I'm not sure but it is beautiful it has this kind of gold lacquered appearance in the center with this beautiful pink rose design and it looks absolutely perfect on this dress really dainty and elegant ornate piece in case you haven't noticed I'm wearing a new hat it's really pretty and this is another purchase from my favorite place to get vintage headwear and that is Revival for Vintage. I will take it off so that you can see but it is a vintage half hat which is one of my favorite favorite styles and they were very popular in the 1940s and 50s partially because they allowed for you to style your hair kind of at the front and the still wear a hat, so hats were very fashionable at that time, so you could do kind of an elaborate curled style at the front, put your hat on the back of your head and it wouldn't disturb the styling that you had done. So this piece is from the 50s and it is a beautiful half hat, it just kind of clamps onto your head and it has this really pretty netting situation going on and then all of these gorgeous blue and pink flowers. It is so, 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 so pretty. And it also has a couple of little sort of pearly details in the very center of the flowers. To put it on, you simply whoop, sort out your hair so that it's laying properly. Pop on your hat. There you go. As you will know if you watched my last video, I do have to wear this true vintage dress because it is completely sheer with a slip. So I got two new ones, well new to me, they are both from the 1950s and 60s and one I am wearing right now. You can see it in a reel on my Instagram so I will leave that link in the description below but the one that I am not wearing is this one. It is really pretty lilac, I love the colour lilac, it's so beautiful and it comes to just above the knee, nice and slim fitted and it has sheer lace cups along the front and adjustable straps so you can wear this underneath any dress of your choice. It's also really good to wear if you are wearing a corset or some kind of shaping garment to wear a slip underneath so that the um, foundational garment isn't directly on your bare skin because you should never wear corsets directly on bare skin. They were never historically worn on bare skin. You always had a slip or a shift or a chemise or something underneath because otherwise it's A uncomfortable and B you're getting all of your sweat and stuff on the very hard to clean garment rather than this which can just be hand washed or tossed into a washing machine. So little bit of fun history fact for you there as well. This beautiful true vintage slip is from Amorier Bridal which I will also leave a link to in the description. So we absolutely have to talk about this incredible incredible set that I managed to get my hands on today. <laughs> okay. 
So this is a true vintage compact set. And this is the original box that it came in. So beautiful. And when you open it up, this is what we have inside. So in this beautiful, beautiful set is a compact mirror. The mirror does actually contain some actual 1950s makeup and this is the mirror side. Hello! On the back it says Polvo Macchiator Macchiator and Barcelona, España and it has the brand name here. The very first powder compact, a little fun fact for you here, was created during the reign of King Louis XIV by French perfumers during the 17th century. These then moved across the channel into the hands of English jewellers. However, it wasn't until the 1920s, with the rise of more acceptable makeup wearing, that these sort of cosmetic compacts began being produced en masse. So the next thing in this set is this beautiful scent bottle. Now this does actually have the remains of a little bit of perfume in it. You can smell where the scent used to be. And it smells really good. It does smell like old person, but I think that's just because this is the kind of perfume that was popular <laughs> during sort of the 50s and 60s, so of course we associate it with old person, if you know what I mean. Um, but it's really, really beautiful little shape has a gold, has a pearl, and I might, I'm undecided as to whether I'm going to clean this out and use it, or whether I'm just going to leave the scent that was already in it in there and just have it as decoration. The next is this beautiful lipstick holder. How stunning is this? So it has a gold finish with a silver bottom, diamantes around there and also on the cap. Oh, it's so pretty. And if you are makeup savvy, you can actually, because it is a dial-up lipstick tube in here, transfer one of your modern lipsticks into this lipstick holder. I know Dita Von Tees, I have her book, Your Beauty Mark. She says that she does that with a lot of lipsticks. She will take a modern lipstick and put it into a vintage lipstick holder. The final thing in the set, if I can get it out, is this little, whew, I think it's an eyeliner holder. And it just looks like this. It kind of looks like my Besame lip brush. I think there might be a little bit of damage on the very top of the lid there. I don't think that's supposed to quite be like that, um, but that's okay. This beautiful box and set is by the brand Myrna Pons. I will place that here on screen so that you can decide whether I'm saying it correctly. It is a Spanish brand and I am going to now insert a small little montage telling you a little bit more about the history of this brand. The origins of the Myrna Pons brand date back to the end of the 19th century in Granada, where the Carrasco family was dedicated to producing perfumed waters and essences. In 1912, they moved to Barcelona and opened a perfume store in the street Nu de la Rambla. Back then, the perfume came in bulk and it was the saleswoman who perfumed the customer, who paid for a few grams. At the end of the war, Ramon Pons joined the business, which gave a big turn in the marketing of perfumes and thanks to which, the brand Myrna Pons acquired a reputation in the world of perfumery. 
This innovative perfumer introduced a new way of presenting the perfumes. He dressed them with elegant jars decorated with jewels and golds, with eye-catching plugs in luxurious cases with mirror and satin. Its success was resounding as a simple perfume in bulk became an elegant and distinguished gift, highly appreciated by visitors who visited the city. The star perfume was number one, known for its crown cap. They offered more than 40 different fragrances, always presented in the most original ways and which were subsequently imitated by other major brands of perfumery. I hope that you enjoyed seeing this true vintage haul and learning a little bit more about some really beautiful, genuine vintage brands. I don't know why I blinked for so long there. <laughs> If you would like to see more videos in this vein where I perhaps talk about the history of a brand or the history of a certain kind of item, then do let me know because doing research is always really, really fun. And if you would like to subscribe and turn on the little notification bell so you see when I upload, that would be really wonderful too. Please do all remember to have courage and be kind and may all of your dreams come true. And I will see you in my next video. Bye! You want to watch me get stuck in my dress. The thing about this dress, okay, right, is that it fits me. You can see it fits me really well, but getting it on and off is hell. So, um, the, it has a side zipper here, which I will just take down. You can see, but it doesn't actually go down very far. This beautiful bust shaping stuff is tight. Um, and I live in fear of ripping a seam down the side. I actually did reinforce the stitching here by hand myself. So, what are we gonna do? I'm wearing a full slip and everything underneath so I really don't care about, you know, I've put pictures of me on Instagram in the underpinnings for this dress so that really doesn't bother me. So, what we're gonna have to do is So the underbust thing is now under my armpits. And I think I'm stuck. Right, okay. Find the skirt. <laughs> oh. And then the arms invariably my other new slip. You can see possibly here that I reinforced a whole bunch of this stitching along here just because this is the part that I am afraid of um, pulling because there is a lot of tension <laughs> on that piece particularly when I'm getting the dress on. So just some fun facts about what it's like to own very precious true vintage pieces. Where the stitching that I did starts, you can see because it's like way less neat. And then this is the original stitching. I am gonna go over this bit again at some point. But that's what I did.